The Ark Best story started in 1923, humble beginnings as a local Arkansas freight hauler. Well, today, Ark Best is a logistics powerhouse with more than 15,000 employees across nearly 250 locations that help keep the global supply chain moving. Over the past hundred years, ArcVest has not only survived, it has thrived. It took a commitment to evolve, adapt, embrace change, to innovate, and to keep a focus on customers. Reaching this extraordinary milestone called for grit and perseverance and a strong values-driven culture. It's the result of a we'll find a way attitude. So to tell this remarkable story, we sat down with past and present ArcBest leaders and employees from across the organization. And through these conversations, we can reflect on the past while we look to the future. Customers, after all, are at the center of what ArcBest does every day, but employees are truly at the heart of their success. So the people at ArcBest make the difference, and that's been true for a hundred years. graced with the leadership, past and present. And why don't we begin by introducing ourselves. Tim Thorne, I've been with the company 31 years and retired a couple years ago. David Stubblefield, I've been with, was with the company for 43 years and retired 20 years ago. Judy McReynolds, I've been with the company 26 years. Robert Young, I was with the company for 52 years, retired in 2017. Bob Davidson, I was with the company for just short of 38 years and I've been retired for 13 years. Wes Kemp, I was with the company for 42 years and retired 11 years ago. We are gathered here with some of the current leaders of ArcBest. So I'm Stephen Leonard, I'm the Chief Commercial Officer and President of Asset Light Logistics. I'm Michael Johns, I'm the Chief Legal Officer and I've been with the company for 16 years. I'm Dennis Anderson, I'm the Chief Strategy Officer. I've been with the company nearly 20 years. Matt Beasley, Chief Financial Officer. I've been with the company a little over a year. Aaron Gaddis, I'm the Chief Human Resources Officer, and I have been here 24 years. And I'm Seth Runzer, the President of ABF. I've been here 16 years. I'm Michael Newsidi, President of ArcBest Technologies and Chief Innovation for uh, ArcBest, and I'm joined today by the leadership team for ArcBest Technologies. Hi everyone, I'm Craig Walmeyer. I'm the Vice President of Technology Research and Development. I'm Douglas Lundeman, I'm the CIO and Vice President of ArcBest Technologies. Erica Brigantz, Vice President of Data Science. Kevin Yoder, Vice President of Innovation Management and Strategy. Kevin Taylor, Vice President and Chief Technology Officer. We're gonna look back on the history of a company that began a century ago and which is now known as Arc Best. Do you have the chance to get together as a group that often? Not that often. Not, not often enough. Some of us are Texans. <laughs> <laughs> Almost three quarters of a century ago, your father bought this enterprise. Remember that time? Yes, I was 11 years old. <laughs> uh, I was at summer camp and my mother wrote me a letter and said, your dad has bought a trucking company. And I thought, my gosh, why did he do that? And he bought the company and immediately began to grow it with acquisitions. But it was a, a tough way to grow because these companies wouldn't be for sale unless they were broke. You couldn't buy a company that was profitable. So every time we bought one, we had a turnaround situation. Uh, when we bought Delta Motor Lines uh, early on, uh, they were losing money and the Interstate Commerce Commission would not let us merge in because they, unless they were profitable and it was a big challenge to convert over and get them making money uh, and where we could move on forward. Stubblefield's being uh, very bashful about that. He was one of the guys that made it happen. Uh, three men were appointed uh, at that time to build a model of the company to determine what we need to do to, to make Delta Motor Lines profitable. They built a model, a very early computer model with 80 column punch cards but they had a good cost system and it worked. It, it would produce the actual numbers when you ran it against history. And uh, we followed their model and we, we turned that company around in like a week after we implemented their plan. Dave was very instrumental in that. I think there were 26 
different acquisitions over the years. Uh, and almost all of them were near-death experiences. It was really a instance of what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And uh, I was always proud of how everyone pulled together and we came out uh, bigger and stronger and healthier. What I think I'm hearing here, deregulation redefined free enterprise. It was uh, pretty wild. It was the Wild West because nobody in the in the past had had to deal with price. We were ahead of the game. I think Robert had the insight to bring in Bob to run pricing for us because it was, you know, a new, uh, fresh look. And, uh, you know, Bob, you can talk about that, but Please. it was it was an amazing, I, I think, just overall environment to try to navigate your way through. There was no place where you could look to see how has somebody else done this because you were creating it all from <laughs> from whole cloth we were able to charge uh, a premium and those are the things that that helped us to prosper in those wild west days that you guys talked about 1988 coming up 40 years ago the success of the company made it a tempting target for acquisition fall of 87 the stock market took a big dip and and our stock was similarly impacted so it made it a more attractive target we began to look at what our options were and they were pretty simple we could let him go ahead and buy it or we could outbid him we began to run our traps to see if we could borrow the money to outbid him and we we couldn't so we got a call from a, a company called Kelso and Company. And within uh, like 10 days, they were able to raise the money. Uh, they were really, really good to work with. And in four years, we bought them out, went back public. It was a kind of a fairy tale ending, but during the interim, it was not much fun. What was the most challenging time in the company's history? A century is a long time, but... I... Well, for me, um... When I think back about that, I think of the challenges that we dealt with during the Great Recession. It really caused us to look hard at our business, hard at what we were doing, look at those long customer relationships that we had, look at where the strengths of our people were. And we had a lot of long sessions about what we could um, invest in, what we could put sunlight on and really pull ourselves out of that. And, and today we're a logistics company, an integrated logistics company with many solutions because we looked hard at ourselves um, as a result of that event. The Great Recession, I had been, not been president very long, that we lost about 25% of our revenue in about five weeks. Now, when you're running a company, that's a problem. So I, that has to be it. We, we lost $100 million in, in, in 2009, 2009, cut it in half in 2010. And then my last year there, we got back in the profit. Virtually my entire time as president, we were still working on trying to get back in, in things. That time had to be one of the most, uh, for me, probably the most challenging time during my career. People didn't leave. People didn't, you know, decide to go somewhere else. They stayed here. Uh, we believed in what we were doing and really at the front line across the organization, up through leadership, everyone made sacrifices to get us through that. I just remember at that time, everybody banded together, you know, because we just, we all had to make sacrifices to, to survive and uh, we all work together as a team. And that's what was so special about that is because nobody said, oh, woe is me, or this is too big of a challenge. We viewed it as an opportunity and we attacked it, you know, and that's really what we do as any of these challenges come up. It's just been, it's just to see the grit that we have is, is really impressive. You know, we don't just sit on our hands and say, oh, it's a bad economy. It's let's go, let's go fix this. We can control our own destiny. So and that's, that's been great. And I'll speak to a more recent challenge, and I think Judy can attest to this, and that's during COVID. Because at the service centers, we have kind of a community, right? A culture of, of finding a way. That's our vision statement of getting things done. And I think that was interrupted during COVID. So many changes uh, happened, and, and it, it happened by state, happened by customer. And, uh, you know, I give credit to our team for, for really finding a way to navigate our way through that. I mean, our, our road drivers uh, were uh, patriotic in their approach. I think our, our people felt a calling to, to serve our country uh, and to get um, goods where they needed to be. You know, really proud of our, our people. I feel like uh, some of our folks out there had some, some challenges they had to work through, 
but truly heroes. Uh, we're still finding a way to do business. And then at the same time, we've got our drivers and our dock workers out on the front lines, you know, keeping the global supply chain moving. So I just think of that time and I think of all the highs and the lows that went with it. Yeah, it was something new every day and it was all <laughs> uncharted territory. So it was, uh, it was really, really interesting and challenging time. You know, we did not have a lot of experience with people working remotely. Most people were in an office and, and for the safety of our employees, a lot of them went home to work and we had to work through those challenges. But I think what is always reassuring to me is that the company invest in our people and when things turned around, really made that right for our employees as yeah. well. And so I think it's important, not just to talk about the challenge, but how we react to that and how we invest in our people for the long run. You know, luckily we had recently invested in Microsoft Teams. And, um, you know, if, you, if this had happened in, you know, 2010 timeframe, it would have been a different experience. I was traveling at one of our service centers and that's when the news came out and immediately where all of our heads went was our people. You know, how do we protect our people? I mean, there's so many decisions we made that could have been really wrong, but we, we used that experience that we had in the past and it helped carry us through that unknown situation, you know? That adaptability, that flexibility, the, the culture, one supposes not every company has it, and that's why some didn't make it during The extraordinarily high ethical standard that, that it, it was in the company, I'll just trace that back to Robert and his father, who, who always let you know that you could make mistakes, and we all made mistakes at this table, uh, but you ask us well, not- Well, speak to, for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ask us not to make them the same one twice, which was, which was reasonable, but uh, you, you just had to be honest with each other and honest with the customers. I think that Bob Young, Robert's father, who really was founder of our company, set that kind of standard from the very beginning. Dad had a real simple uh, explanation of what you were supposed to do. He said, just don't do anything you wouldn't want to explain in Sunday school. <laughs> and that kind of covers the waterfront. <laughs> we didn't have a big manual on how you're supposed to conduct yourself. It was just a, a common sense approach. And when I started with ABF on July the 14th, 1969, it was already a great company. And that goes back to, to Robert's father doing things that were unethical you just didn't do. And I think the culture largely started years and years ago. What I think about when I think of our culture is business has changed so much over the last decade. What's great about ArcBest is we've mastered the, the art of doing life together. So it's just the way you're able to do that. You really truly know each other and enjoy being around each other. Everything we do, we we just operate with such a high level of trust, you know, so and that's really what makes it special. And that just goes a long way when you work with people that you trust and you just feel really good about. I mean, that just makes it such a more enjoyable work atmosphere. The other part of our culture is excellence and just constantly improving and trying to do a better job for customers and each other. The value that really is highlighted in our culture and that I felt as soon as I came in is collaboration. You know, everybody works very well together. They want the best for the company, um, but they also want the best for each other. And, you know, coming in, I'm uh, much newer to the company than folks at this table. And so, and it, it just really made a, a very strong impression on me. Another thing that I would think it really comes to my mind about the culture is really integrity. I mean, I think we're honest with each other. We uh, do our best to, to do the right thing, follow the rules. I think that the essence of the culture is just caring. I mean, we care about our company. Uh, we care about each other. We care about the community that we live in. We care about our customers. You are at once the beneficiary and the keeper of uh, that culture. I feel that way. And I felt that way from, you know, the the just the beginning. You feel it. Um, we've all been in that leadership role, you know, for our company and you feel it and you see what's good about it and you never want that to change. Difficult to think of uh, any industry, any enterprise that doesn't shape shift uh, during the course of its existence. What are some of the changes? How did this industry change in your time? Oh boy, it changed a lot. When I started working in the summers at the Fort Smith uh, Service Center, a big change is we had four wheel carts. You could put more on them. <laughs> and then finally we got a forklift. In those days, almost nothing was on a pallet. So forklifts were not very usable. We would move crates down the dock with, by putting pipe under them. 
and rolling them on pipe. Now we have a forklift for every employee on the dock, uh, pretty much. Well, the, the big thing, it's in technology again. When you could do something new, I was always trying to find a way of how can we do this within the company. And when I started with the company, they already had that study going on to start freight billing electronically. And uh, it just took off from there, and I, I, I enjoyed every minute of it in terms of finding new ways and more effective ways of doing things along those lines. Technology has really changed our company and changed our industry a ton over the years. Um, but what's changed uh, our, our is really the, the, our marketplace, our competitors. You know, we just done a great job of, of surviving uh, throughout the years uh, because of that that marketplace. And I think we do that because of some of the things we talked about, our culture, how we serve customers, how we have relationships, our quality process. Um, but that's really changed over the years. In your time as CEO, does does change? Warp speed, does that fit or? Well, you know, it does. I totally agree with uh, the technology comments that have been made, but where we see it, um, in addition to what's been said, is is with the with our customers, with shippers. They can do rate comparisons. They can do service time comparisons. They can really have the visibility on the choice that they're making like never before. Um, that evolution has put a lot of pressure and like you said, warp speed, well, it just makes you have to wake up every day and think, okay, what, what area am I advancing in so that I'm gonna be you know, at the top of the list? Now, what are some of the significant changes with customers you know, even in our industry that you've seen while at the company? I think about uh, what was termed several years ago, the Amazon effect, where customers, consumers' expectations of getting their orders quicker, quicker and quicker, and how that's caused the whole industry, the whole supply chain industry to have to adapt to that, to those expectations. I don't know that 10 years ago, customers or businesses cared as much about knowing exactly where you know along the route that shipment is but that's what they're asking for now customers going more digital being able to see product in transit um more more readily that's been a that's been a big time focus specifically one of the large changes with the idea that the information that's moving with the product maybe is as valuable or more valuable than the products that's moving itself. And so that data and the, the, the analytics that are around supply chain and our business, um, they allow you to do things just so much more intelligently. But as we turn to the next decade, um, those, are the, those are the kinds of things that are gonna make us smarter, they're gonna make us uh, more efficient, more productive, and I think that's a, that's a, that's a slow burn on revolution that's, that's really happening right now. <laughs> change, innovation, flexibility, uh, we'll find a way. Pretty good motto. Right. But how do you make it work? How do, you, how do you find a way? Every time I hear that, I go back to our people. Anytime I'm with customers, the first thing they do is mention, you know, Michelle, Lisa, Jeremy does my work for me and I, and I love what they do. And so to me, that, that, that vision statement, we'll find a way is just our people uh, saying yes to a customer, executing on their behalf and doing such a great job of it that that customer knows them by name. And, it, and I'm just always so impressed with our people. The phrase, we'll find a way, actually came from a customer saying that to us about us and it just manifests itself in our people's actions. Well, you all were having to find a way. You had to, but you, you would draw in your resources to accomplish what we need to do. It's been around a long time. It's, it's our culture, it's what we do, we find a way. But I think what was great about you know saying, hey, this is our vision statement, we'll find a way, and it came from a customer, is that our people that are, that are um, every day doing the job in the field, picking up a shipment, um, delivering a shipment, uh, having to get a timekeeper delivered on time. Uh, every day, thousands of shipments, they're finding a way to get that done and they're thinking about that. That's our vision. We find a way to get this done. I think not only the, the grit and the perseverance that you've been hearing about, but also an innovative mindset, knowing that things will change 
embracing change and having uh, open-mindedness about that. There's an element that, that we haven't talked a lot about, and that's the uh, role of IT, the way that technology has framed our relationship with customers. Uh, the company kind of developed these tools for our relationship with customers. I mean, we were the, the first company to have uh, uh, freight rating based on the personal computer. We had the first internet site and it was always robust. And we had, you know, guys like uh, Chris Burton and Leo Sherum and Michael New City, uh, who were really pioneers in that area. Someone posed the question, what are we gonna do with this new thing called the World Wide Web? It started off as the kind of like the wide yellow pages. It was, it was uh, people were taking their marketing materials and they were posting them online, but there wasn't a lot of interactivity. Right. And I think the vision that was cast in that office was, how can we use this as a tool <clears throat> or a medium? I mean, we weren't using these words like connect and positively impact, <laughs> but that was kind of the idea was how can we um, reach customers better? Mm -hmm. And we kind of went into this arms race yeah where we were actually building technology that what that wasn't even available that was to me uh, one of the, i think one of our big accomplishments we decided to build our own imaging system and to capture all the bill ladings and delivery receipts electronically from the field as opposed to them being mailed in we, we just sat down at one day and said you know i think we could do this and and what what that resulted in were two major things. One was uh, more of a centralized billing approach. And the second was we started putting those documents on the internet, which was, we were the first company to do that. One of the reasons that that was able to happen was we were given the freedom to innovate from above. This build versus buy concept, what does that mean? That build versus buy? We've been a, we've been a build versus buy type of company for a long time. There's so many examples over, what, what are we, 36 years? Coming up on 37. Yeah. A lot of things didn't exist. We had to write it ourselves. It just did, there was no software you could buy. You built your own systems, and we've had a history of that for, for a very long time. It's just the longevity of a lot of our systems and how we keep those, you know, up to date and how we progress those as the business changes to support the needs. But at the end of the day, we've got to bring all that together because our customers are, are looking at us as one art best. And I think that was a source of pride, I think, for all of us that we always knew that we were the leading technology company in the industry. And I think from the things I see rolling out now, Judy, I think we've, we've uh, maybe lengthened that lead. Along came this creature, this bird called Fox. There's innovation. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Director of Engineering, Shannon Lively, back in 2014, had uh, the idea for this and, and where it came from for him was he was studying how to, to create a better productivity. Uh, we liked it well enough that we decided we'd put some investment behind it. One uh, problem that it addresses is driver detention. You know, they're, they're not sitting there wasting fuel. Burning so diesel. yeah, that's right. It's just, it just a, a great innovation for that purpose. We've been doing uh, innovation for a long time. It's not new to us. And where it started to where it is today shows what type of company we are. And the approach we take to innovation with, with Vox or anything else is we're always trying to disrupt ourselves because if we don't, someone else is going to. What's great about it, it is something that has the potential to change the movement of freight similar to what containers did. Just having that be something that that comes from our organization is, is exciting. We have the ArcBest name, and that name's a very strong name out in the industry. Uh, so we, every door is open to us. I mean, some huge, huge opportunities here, and I feel like this is one of the first times that we've been allowed to take the innovations and, and take them to the public. As an outsider kind of coming in, seeing it for the first time, just seeing the way that we iterate it and the way that we could test things and, and you know, oh, this doesn't work. We're going to go back to the drawing board. We're going to redo it. We're going to try it again. It was very exciting to see that kind of in action in a physical hardware type space. You know, I know we do that on the, the software quite a bit, but it was the first time I had seen that really in a physical hardware space. 
you think about um, you know a technology that allows you to load and unload a trailer in five minutes. That's what Vox is. It solves many inefficiencies, and so it's resonating really well with customers. But like any innovation, um, there's still a lot of work to do. It is uh, so uh, rewarding to think that a hundred-year-old company can basically run a startup and do it pretty well inside you know the organization. Art best. 100 years, what does it mean? It means that there's a strong foundation and an, and an ability to adapt and grow that, you know, I, I think that we're all, we all feel a responsibility to steward that into the next century. We, you know, we, sp we don't spend a lot of time looking backwards. We're forward facing and, you know, that history and, and the things that have happened in the past really, as Dennis said, puts a firm foundation underneath us, but we're, we're focused on the future. Honestly, for me, it's encouraging. You know, when you're, when you get come to work every day at a place that's been around for a hundred years, and as Michael said, we're thinking about the next hundred years, um, that's just so encouraging to um, kind of in, infuse energy into what you're doing day in and day out. You know that there's, uh, there's more to it than just you, and, uh, and you're getting to be a part of something bigger than, than, than you are as an individual, and that's, uh, that's always a great thing. We, uh, we operate like, we're, what do we need to do to be here? And we're always listening to our people, developing our people, because that's who's ultimately gonna take us there. You know, So that, that's what I feel like is, we have a great history, we need to be really proud of that, but it's our responsibility to put that another 100 years up on the wall. I just feel really proud to get to be a part of this. There's just such a sense of pride this year, you know, to be a part of a milestone like this. And I think about, okay, well, we haven't been around for a hundred years just because we're lucky. And it's just been great to go through these challenges, to come out stronger and then see this opportunity in front of us and how much there's still left for us to do. It's exciting to be part of a company with such a rich history. And, um, you know, I definitely feel the responsibility of that when I come in each day to make sure that we continue to grow and thrive in the future. We do uh, have that, in some ways, that innovative startup mentality, disrupt ourselves. And so I, I, what is so neat about that is the getting to tell the story, yes, of the history, but for people to understand this is a growing, changing, innovative company that has a huge amount of potential and that we actually have the chance for this great company to continue into the next hundred years is a very uh, satisfying thought for me. What does it mean to you that the company is celebrating its 100th anniversary? You know, how many companies actually make it to 100 years? Not many. Being part of the part of a company that's that's celebrating 100 years, it's pretty amazing. So it's one thing to be a 100 year old company. It's another thing to be a 100 year old company that's not in decline. And I feel like we're a 100 year company, but you know, we're, we're well capitalized, we are in a good financial position, we have a good strategy, and that feels good. It, it's because it, it tells us more about the next 100 years. What it tells me is that we've had a long line of great employees and great leaders who have made great decisions. You know, and it's not that we made all the right decisions, but clearly there was groundwork laid 100 years ago that has got us to here. I mean, I don't think we can discredit that those decisions have been made along the way. Otherwise, we would not be in this situation. You're starting your second century. <laughs> what does that mean to you? What does that mean to you? Well, it means that uh, these guys have planted a lot of shade trees along the way, and our predecessors did too, that we're living under today. Uh, they, they, they built the company uh, and made it possible for the people that are there today to, to continue. I think we all recognize that uh, our company will be doing things uh, going forward uh, that we really don't anticipate at all. And it'll be different from the things that we do now. Uh, I have no doubt that this company is going to con continue. Uh, just looking for, especially with Judy's leadership that I've seen. When you think about, you know, the next 100 years and how we how we last another 100 years, Judy, the work that, that we did and, and you've done and, and really developing our strategy and now executing that strategy, uh, really, uh, it doesn't surprise me that the leadership teams talked about the three things that, that are, that's really needed. And we, we've talked about this with our team uh, to last another hundred years. 
and they and they work together and it's and it's growth we talked about hey we have to grow we have to innovate and we've talked about innovation here and we have to be more efficient and so uh i agree with wes i'm really confident in in, in where we're headed and i know judy's going to lead us to another hundred years i think the most interesting thing and it really is an encouragement uh, when I started the company, uh, we had about 700 employees, and when I retired, we had, and that was 20 years ago, we had 13,500. Well, we have now, we're talking about four or five billion, and I bet we don't have a lot more employees than 13,500, which- About 15,000. Okay, so the enormous growth that has taken place, it means that there's the right things are taking place to uh, to grow the company. You know, I'd love uh, to bring my father back uh, for just 15 minutes and show him where the company is today. The, the He died in 1973, and I think we did $60 million in revenue that year. And I think Judy racked up, what, about $5 billion last year. Uh, company's really grown over the 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 last 40 or so years uh, since dad passed away and i'd love to show it because he would really be happy about it he he wanted to see it grow he loved seeing the people grow the growth of the company has been phenomenal and particularly it's accelerated since judy's been in charge judy mcreynolds you're the centennial ceo <laughs> fortunate very fortunate to be in the in the role in this special year. It's what a very it special yeah. year. Oh, it, it means so much. I mean, I, you know, what I want um, everyone to understand, um, I, you know, I feel like we're a company that sees uh, the long term opportunities and we're willing to be patient through those to, to see the result. What I love about our company and the leaders that are around the table is, you know, many of them taught me that, you, you know, you have to, be patient, there's gonna be those obstacles, there's gonna be those challenges, but if it's uh, an idea worth investing in, if it's growth that's worth having, you know, just just do the right things. And sometimes uh, when it's most challenging, you just have to take that next step. You're just making that next move and, you know, be patient for the right things. And I think when you're a company that is the age that we are, and you know, um, I just think about how exceptional we are, how exceptional our employees are, and being in uh, the hundredth year. That it's it's going to take that um, that disciplined approach to do what's right, you know, to set the course of longevity, you know, for decades to come. What's so interesting about what that next ten years looks like? If we stay close to our customers, they're going to guide us. They're gonna tell us what they want. They're gonna tell us what we need to do. We just have to listen. For half those hundred years now, I've written about the company and its founders and their successors, about its evolution as a global enterprise, about its trials and its triumphs. ArcBest has never been less than an interesting story and more often than not, it's been a compelling one. And as its second century begins, there's nothing to suggest that ArcBest won't continue to hold Arkansas's attention and the world's. Welcome, team. What a privilege, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We added up the years, and we've got 259 years around the table here at the company. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? There is a big difference with this company. I mean, you can tell by the people. And I think our people here are the difference of what makes ArcBest so unique and why we've lasted 100 years. We'll find a way. And it's, it's, it's a true thing that we truly believe because we live and die by that. So it's, it's, it's a true statement of who we are. We're not just moving freight from A to B. Uh, we're, we're not. We're, we're coming up with creative solutions that could change the industry. 
we're doing something good here, and that's why we've been around for 100 years. I think it's a great accomplishment. I think it's awesome, but it also just feels like this is just the beginning of something great.